As I reflect back on the second year of the pandemic, and now moving into a third, a common thread through so much of 2021, whether we're talking about intersectionality or systemic racism or anti-fat bias or moving beyond teen pregnancy prevention, is that it's much more than just about language or framing. At Healthy Teen Network, we often talk about how much words matter. And while of course that is true, it is also much bigger than that. It's our mindset and being aware of how our experiences, our values, and our biases can color our perspective. As educators and professionals who work with youth, it's our responsibility to move past all of that by interrogating what social constructs about race, gender, or body size we have internalized. We must also consider all of the experiences, values, and more that our young people bring with them all the time. This is how we can be more inclusive and affirming so that we can meet the needs of all young people. This is how we can go about dismantling biases that uphold systems and inequality, oppression, and discrimination that keep our clients, students, and patients from getting the support they need. And it's not just about how we see things, but also how we do things. For example, during our 2021 Healthy Teen Network Conference, we had the opportunity to reflect on how we can be more open-minded to new ways of doing things, both organizationally and collaboratively. Whether it's committing the time and energy to develop and maintain a brand because it can build connection and trust with our audience, or thinking about how we can leverage existing tools and technology to change up what's been done, like being able to order a sexual assault collection kit through DoorDash, or listening to and uplifting the experiences of the end user or the community where a program or solution will be implemented starting there with them as the experts on their challenges to innovate and create something that truly solves problems. When we stop doing things the same way they've always been done and give ourselves the space and freedom, everyone benefits. One of the ways that we can do all of this to broaden our mindset for the intersectional world we live in is by investing our time in making connections all the time, not just because we want something from someone. These connections, this networking, this is not about who we know, but who knows us and what we're doing. Despite a pandemic that has created distance between us, we've seen more creative ways of connecting and maintaining our networks, both personal and professional. Whether it's working to bridge health gaps in smaller communities who often face barriers to quality sexual and reproductive health care and education, or making a new connection with someone you want to join forces with in the field, Collaboration and reflection have been crucial for all of us. So I encourage you, as I know I'll be doing, to think about what fills your cup. Take the time to notice what are some things in our job, in our daily lives that bring us joy? And is there a balance or an imbalance in what drains our cup? And then how do we begin to move ourselves through the stages of change to reset that balance? And I ask that not just because it's important for ourselves, even though it is and critically so, but because it's also how we are able to show up for our young people. Thank you so much for connecting with us this year and for all the work you are doing each and every day. We see you and we appreciate you.